Hi Marty here and today I'm gonna show you how to make a quick walk cycle animation in Krita. Also, I almost forgot, well, yeah, I've got a different chair because I'm recording this the day after. But I wanted to tell you something that I'm planning on doing stream, live stream, with some kind of collaboration live stream with you guys and you can like join in and we can talk about art and draw art and I don't know, learn more stuff. But I'm not sure if anyone would be interested in this. That's why I've made the voting poll so you can actually vote if you would be interested in it or not. And if there will be more than 10 people actually interested in this, I will make the stream happen and we can, I don't know, talk about art and learn more stuff. So please vote. Link for the poll is under the video and I will check the results in a few weeks and we'll see. Oh, it's gonna go. Okay. End of this little vloggy thing and let's go to the video. It's gonna be a super simple animation so everybody can try it. You don't even have to own a tablet, graphic tablet to make this animation. And it's gonna be super simple characters so not even any artistic, artistic skills. If you want to see some fundamentals of actually animating in Krita, don't forget to check out my older video when I'm explaining everything about animation in Krita particularly, how onion skins work and how the timeline works and how to create new uh, frames and stuff like this. I'm not covering it in this video particularly because I don't find it that important for this kind of video because there are two separate things. This is more for the people who, who actually started animating in Krita and who, who knows the all fundamentals of animating. So let's start! <laughs> the first thing you have to do is to create some kind of character and with this one I picked this super easy character, like the most easiest character you can think of and it's just a ball with some legs, you know, so it can actually walk. It's like the easiest thing. Maybe the more more easy would be to create just one leg, but it wouldn't be walk cycle, it would be just jumping cycle or something. So let's create this character. So first thing I'm gonna do is to create a head. So I'm gonna create a new layer and with ellipse, so ellipse tool I'm gonna create this head shape. Also in a tool options don't forget to select uh, the filling color. You can select either background color or foreground color or something else. And this will be one of the animation layers. Now I'm gonna uh, repeat the process for left foot and right foot because you know you ha it's better to have them on separate layers so you can move them around and don't have to redraw them again. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with, ell with ellipse tool and create two separate layers from left and right foot. Before I started, I've added this little grid to my canvas so I can actually do some kind of perspective in the character. Not that it's that complicated character that would need perspective, but it's kind of nice to have it, you know, so because you are going with two legs and they are kind of in different, different layers. So I've added this little grid to help me animate this with little perspective to it. Also, you can find this grid in a brush set pack and the brush pack is called Concept and Illustration. You can find it on the website of the Krita in resources, I think. I will add the link for this brush pack in the description below so you can get it. Now I create a new layer and call it Sketch because uh, I have to do some sketches, you know, some kind of uh, guidelines to show, to kind of help me imagine how the, how the motion will work. So I will create a sketch and now I'm gonna just do a few lines to see how the legs are gonna move, you know, like this. Also I'm adding, uh, in the sketch layer also I'm adding some kind of like guide positions for my frames where the feet is gonna be at, I know, at some movement, you know, to see how many frames I actually need for this animation. The first thing I'm gonna animate is the body, you know, because when you're walking your body does this kind of movement. It's just to, I know, create some kind of bumpy bumpy movement so the legs can follow the bumpy movement so I can see where actually the leg is hitting the ground and stuff like this. So just to create another guideline for my animation. 
Also, I'm trying to play the animation a few times to see if it's working or not, if it's too, I know, shaky or too visible that it's not like motion picture, it's uh, just the frames behind, like just the frames. So I'm just trying to see how it works and continuing the animation. And now let's animate the legs. The first thing I'm gonna do is to go to the same frame in the future, kinda more distant than just the second frame, and give myself some kind of end goal for this part of the animation. And the end goal for this part of the animation is to have the leg right up. So at the highest point that it will go. And then I can do some in-betweens and fill this gap with another frames. Because it's nothing harder than just go like, yeah, now I have to move this, 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 and you don't know where the end goal is. It's way easier to set some end goal and then just one in-between, and in-between of these in-betweens and just like make it smooth animation out of it. Also, I'm making the second leg as well, because if the first legs go up, the second legs go back a bit. You know, because you are moving in the front and the legs are going like this, so the second leg is actually going behind you a bit. As I'm going with the right leg, I also have to animate the, uh, the left leg. And I'm making this super nice smooth movement and trying if it's working, and if it's not working, I would have to just kind of adjust it a bit. And as I go, I'm repeating the same process for the mirror leg. So, leg, feet for now, because we are not really using legs now. Because that's uh, easier to fill up the legs afterwards than doing them like this. Because now I know where the feet is like landing. It's the same thing as I was talking about in-betweens. You have to set up some kind of end goal and then you can just fill it up. That's the same thing for, for example, if you're throwing hands on your character, it's way easier to set up like where the hand is and where the hand is touching something and then just fill up the arm into it. So this is the same principle. I'm just using this kind of end goal and then I can fill up the gaps. It's easier. Uh, I'm filling up the gaps to make the movement as smooth as possible and I'm trying to play the animation for me in a little smaller frame rate to see how it goes and if it's natural or not. I'm just tweening up a little bit. Now we're just gonna fill up the legs. How I said before, it's way easier for me now to, to see where the legs will go because I already have the end goal for them, you know, the feet. So now I can just fill up the gap between them with some kind of nice curved lines be uh, to make the movement more smooth and fluid and I will do this for every every leg and also play it again every time when I'm doing some kind of major change I'm playing it again to see if it's working for these, uh, it's super nice to see uh, to look at some videos of people walking or on some animators from Disney and to see this whole fluid animation. And for the legs, I'm using this freehand path tool. It's super nice if you want some kind of really smooth lines with a consistent uh, weight of the brush. It will kind of, you know, uh, smooth out your lines and it's super nice. And actually it's based on vectors. So actually if you would actually create the vector layer and you can use it on, on it. But for now the vector layers are not working in animation. So you can't really animate vector layers, which is kind of sad. Also in this video I wanted to show you some tweening but then I found out that the tweening in Krita is like a really early thing and the only thing that can do is actually opacity tweening and I don't think that's good enough for me to create a tutorial on it. So don't, for, don't worry I will make a tutorial when the tweening will be at least some kind of translation scale and rotation based tweening then I can actually make a tutorial on this kind of matter. So don't worry, I will make another one. So I'm finishing these legs, nice connecting the body with the legs, playing it again to see if it's working. If it's not, I'm just kind of changing them 
Also, I'm getting, you know, this guidelines from the onion skin. Okay, so I finished all legs for my animation and I'm kind of quite happy with the motion of the legs and everything. But now we get kind of boring character. It's just a ball with legs, you know. And even with this super simple character, you can add this kind of a personality to it just by adding a few little details. So I'm gonna add this little bumpy thing on his head to make him lose, look a little bit more goofy and bouncy. So I'm gonna do this whole process of it and I will just follow the movement of the head, how it's bouncing and try to make this little antenna bounce with the body to create this nice and smooth movement of it and it will just flop on each side of his head of the head so it's not that generic so and now when we have like all these things I would maybe add one little detail to this character you know just an eye or something so I'm gonna create an eye with the ellipse tool again I will just fill it with white color and then I do just a new layer for the eye as well and just animate it with the body so it goes with the body up and down, up and down. Just really, really simple, just follow the head through all the frames I've made and fill it up with these translations. Now when I'm finished with the eye I will just have to add the pupil to it. So just create a pupil and with the pupil you can go a little bit crazier. You know, I'm just like making these <laughs> really big motions with the gravity of the head, how it goes up and down. So it's like following the against the motion to make it look like, you know, that the actual movement of the body is uh, kind of affecting the pupil. And when I'm finished with these, the animation is over and if you got at this, to this point, congrats, your first walk cycle animation is over. Okay, I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.